A guy like me, I know the work I put in, I know what I've done, I know my own resume, you know, so, yeah, I feel confident in my, in my ability. I, I know what I can do, they haven't seen me. Once again. I'm here to stay, everyone knows it now. You know what you bring to the table, the value, the value of what you can bring as well, not just what you bring now, the future, and yeah, you can definitely fight for what you work. No one has ever seen a striker like me in the UFC, no one's ever seen a fighter like me in the UFC. It's not just hearsay, it's not talk, I've proved it over and over again. Ready? Change the sort of speed. You need to change the sort of speed, you, you miss it, I'm telling you. Ah. I just, yeah, I accept it. I've, uh, since after my first fight, every fight after that, there's always been like, oh man, you gotta check this guy out. This guy is this and that. But it just grew along with my experience. So I've always been able to adapt to it. Israel, the last title contender of Estonia. Welcome to the top 10. What a spectacular victory. Top five, top five, top five. Well, I'm just saying, there's a myth. I'm gonna sit back, watch the rest of the fights at the middleweight tournament, and then I'll pluck slowly. The last style bender, ladies and I'm gentlemen. The, I'm, I had the same size head, and I was just a skinny boy, so I looked like a lollipop. I was a <laughs> runt, bro, honestly. Like, just a runt. I was never the athletic kid playing basketball or anything like that. I was just the, the runt. When did you get into martial arts? I started in Taekwondo when I was a kid just because after school programs and it was fun. Such a good one for kids, man. Yeah, it was fun. That's why I liked it. Yeah. Like, Hana, do, set, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then uh, I think I almost got my yellow belt. Then my mom kind of pulled me out because I was just wrecking shop around the house, mm. kicking everything. I broke my arm doing backflips off the couch. Oh, and Jesus. she was just like, nah, no more. And um, yeah, I found, uh, you know, Ungbok, the Tony Jaa film. I found that uh, maybe in two... Uh, 2008, yeah, 2008, early 2008, I found that, and I was about 18, and I was like, yo, this is cool, I don't know what this is, and then I found that it was Muay Thai, Back Muay Thai. I found a Muay Thai gym, and then six weeks later, I had my first fight, wow, yeah, that's crazy, yeah, I, I found a video of that first fight, actually, I'll throw it up one how day, how old were you? 18, I was 18, wow, yeah, but I'm glad, people were like, oh, isn't that a little bit too late, but I'm glad that happened, because I didn't feel like I was born out, and for me, I think 18 was a good year, like, good age to start, and I just felt fresh, it was something I wanted to do, after my first fight, I was just chasing that again, that feeling, because I've always been a dancer as well, so I like that roar of the crowd. When I was working in an office in a cubicle, and it was just mundane tasks I had to do, I always had Joe and Brian Redband in my ear talking shit with different guests, so it kind of kept me entertained th through the day, kept me from going postal in that bitch. But uh, yeah, it was kind of cool to finally be on the show itself and then just speak my story, kind of talk some shit and shoot the shit with Joe Rogan. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I think that was probably the third or fourth time I've met Joe. So after the second time, it was kind of like just first name basis type thing. It kind of takes the, the glare off, but it was still cool. You kind of check in like, oh shit. I'm on the JRE, I'm on the Joe Rogan Experience, so yeah, it's part of the gig now, so yeah, I belong there, I belong at the top. People are attracted to confidence. It's an alluring quality, especially when it's backed up by incredible natural talent or hard-earned skill. Israel Adesanya has the perfect balance of all three. His unshakable belief in his own abilities could only be misinterpreted as arrogance or hubris by someone who has never seen him perform or who doesn't know just how much time and effort he has put in behind the scenes. But more than his conditioning and physical abilities, I want to talk about his mind.
When it comes to high-level combat sports, the speed at which a fighter's brain can read and process their opponent's movements becomes dramatically important. A half an inch or a split second can make the difference between an expert slip and the end of the fight. There's rarely any time for thinking, just processing and reacting. But in those rare moments when one fighter takes complete control of the pace and tempo, the mind is given time to think and create as the opponent reacts. And it is in these moments we see that martial arts truly is a form of self-expression, an art form as pure as dancing or painting. It's the art of controlling yourself and another human being, another highly trained fighter at that, with rhythm, timing, and movement. Recognizing their tendencies, their habitual patterns and reactions, and inducing a state of confusion or of panic, sometimes leading to a cortisol dump making them slower, giving yourself time to read their reactions and make it easier to calculate where they'll move their head if you make a certain movement and then synchronizing that movement with one of your other limbs to meet their head. This is the art of high level striking, and since it all happens so quickly in real time, the mind has to be able to keep up. The mind could be considered the most powerful and important muscle when it comes to fighting. Adesanya's setups and counters seem so natural and easy because he's so in the moment so aware of his surroundings, of his positioning, of his opponent's position, of his opponent's intent. It's almost as if time is just moving slower for Israel than for his opponents. And this level of awareness lets him remain loose, calm, relaxed, uninhibited. Just watch as he scares his opponents stupid with rapid strikes and sheer dominance, only to slow down, gauge his opponent's position, and follow through with a perfectly calculated front teep to the face. Clean between the gloves, we see the head snap back, and the immediate recognition of his opponent's new compromised position as Adesanya pushes off and jumps high into a knee, keeping relentless pressure. I've highlighted other amazing moments in his career in other videos, and it's obvious that Israel's high fight IQ is his most effective tool. It's what makes him so fascinating and exciting to watch. That's not to downplay all the hard work and training he's put in, but you'd be crazy not to recognize the abundance of natural gifts he was given to work with. I look forward to watching his fight this weekend with one of the best to ever do it, a lifelong idol of Adesanya's, Anderson Silva. A win against Silva won't be the kind of win to solidify his name as one of the greatest, since Silva is no longer in his prime and there are new greats to beat but it's an absolutely massive step in the right direction. And Silva is going to be no walk in the park either. If I were a fan of the UFC at an earlier time, I might have made this exact video about Silva. He really is just as incredibly talented and excited, and everything else you could want in a fight. But it's Adesanya's time now. My prediction from my previous video still holds true. I think it's fair to say that Adesanya has the potential to be the next biggest star of the UFC, and a household name before too long. Maybe even approaching Conor McGregor's status, but that's not to compare him in any way to Conor, as they're very different people, and very different fighters. Win or lose this weekend, I want to thank Israel Adesanya for showing the world what he's made of. Those of us who are paying attention greatly appreciate your relentless work, your lessons, your showmanship, and your remarkably entertaining performances. Good luck, you're facing a legend. And those who are in my shoes won't understand it. Like, they think, oh, this is just an easy fight. Nah. Y'all must have forgot. Like, Roy Jones said, y'all must have forgot, because you don't remember who Anderson Silva was. Who the fuck, I mean? He fucking, Bisping dropped him. As he went down, seen Bisping coming. <laughs> yeah. And up kicked him. That's a different kind of fight IQ. That's a different kind of reaction timing. The best way I can show him respect is, so I'm going for him. I'm not, I'm not here to just fuck around and just be like, oh, hey, sir, uh, great honor to fight you. I gotta show respect by giving him everything. And he better show me respect by bringing everything. He said one time to Joe Rogan, you know, oh, I want to fight my clone. And I'm better than this clone. I've studied everything he's done, every single thing. I know some of, the I know some, some of him better than he knows himself whether he likes to believe it or not, because I'm on the outside looking in. And yeah, I, I just want to believe, like, I'm going to bring, I'm going to be the guy to bring the best out of him. You're going to see a different Anderson, Anderson of old, if you will. Anderson that, cha, to beat your girlfriend in the face and had me run around my room all, ah, 
what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna bring that guy back. So yeah, he back. 